Hi everybody, this is Ashley Schmidt, and I'm going to show you how to set up a template in PowerPoint uh, with common sizes. So I like tangent templates, but if you don't have tangent templates, there is this KDP cover size calculator where you can go in, you click main menu, and I will have a link where you can download this. I just got this off the KDP website at one point in time, but it's it's not easy to find, so I'll, I'll give you a link to it, um, and I'll put that in the notes. So let's say a six by nine, 100 pages, um, black and white paper, black ink, black and white paper, six by nine, 100 pages, and then you can click the cover, and it tells you these sizes. Um, I like tangent templates because it makes it way easier than this, but what I've done for you too here, um, maybe take a screenshot of this, or just so you understand it, this is kind of the basic thing. So a six by nine, 100 pages, 110, 120. So you're gonna set your width to be 12.48 inches, your height, 925, and look for a six nine, it's gonna be the same on height, 925, 925. So that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the width, which makes sense because you have more pages. And if you look here, it's 12.48, and it goes up by 0 0.2, 12.5, 1252 and that's because the spine's getting bigger right because there's more pages so these are the numbers you're going to need and then these numbers right here so if you want to take a nice screenshot of this or you know what I'll include this um, kind of easy thing within wherever I put the KDB calculator in the calculator you can do a lot more sizes um, I can kind of show you how this works um, here's that right here it's very tiny <laughs> you can Come up here, 12, 4, 8, right? Here's the spine. And the spine size on here, it says 0 0.225, um, but you can you can round it up to 0 0.23. Um, and then the height, 925, right? And so if you do different sizes, your spine width is going to get bigger. But your height's going to stay the same, um, and your width will be bigger based on the spine. Okay, so I'll include these two things so you have this. Um, but we're going to be using these numbers, and I'll just show you with this 100 pages. So 12, 4, 8, 9, 2, 5, 0. 0.23. And we'll talk about these margins, 0. 0.25 and 0. 0.19. Um, this is the one you've, this one doesn't change for any of these, this 0. 0.25. It's always kind of the same, and we'll talk about that, but um, just so you can see those. Okay, so here's PowerPoint. I've got PowerPoint open, and I'm going to make um, 6 by 9 template, okay? So this is kind of how I do things. So I'll start here and I go to design, see design tab. I'm going to go to slide size, custom size, and we're just going to enter those numbers right there. 12.48, right? And then our height was 0.925, correct? And you're going to hit OK. Um, I just hit maximize. It doesn't matter. It's a blank thing. OK, so now let's do something cool. Let's add a pattern and I'll show you how I kind of do this. So insert picture or fill, and you want a seamless pattern for this. So it's just going to pick up a pattern, um, but I'm going to insert a picture source. I'm going to do this from a file. I have one set up here that I just kind of picked. I got this free. I don't remember for what. <laughs> now what I like to do, you could have it this big if you want it that big, if that looks good to you. But I like to make mine smaller sometimes so you can see the whole pattern. So I hit this tile picture as texture. Um, this is what my software does. See how I'm entering all this by hand and putting it all in? The software software I have, the macros, basically takes all this and dumps it in by itself. So then I'm going to do, let's do, let's say 35% and see what that looks like. You want to make it the same, 35 by 35. Eh, maybe that's too small. Maybe we'll do 50. You just kind of play with it until it, you know, looks good to you. Okay, so I got this cute little pattern, right? Maybe this is a notebook or a journal pattern or something. Now what I like to do is add a spine. Um, a few reasons. One, it helps me center things, and it's going to be on the spine anyway, so it's kind of fun to add a little pop of color. There's two ways to do this um, as far as how the spine goes. So you're going to go to Insert, Shapes. We're going to go to that rectangle there, right? So I'm going to add a rectangle. I always go over here on shape outline and put no outline because I like to change the color and it makes it easier if I don't have to fiddle with that. Um, 
let's do this a certain color. And I'll show you a few ways you can do this. Um, eyedropper, I like to pick something fun and dark on here. So maybe I'll pick like a dark pink. That's a pretty pink. Okay. Now, there's two ways to do this, like I said, with the spine. You can do this so that the spine is big, so it wraps around and you kind of have, um, so you could see the spine, right? So if you made it really big, you could see that like right here is going to be where the spine is and the person would see the color wrapping around. Um, so that's kind of a style you can do. That's one of the styles I like, um, so I make it big. But let's say you just want the spine on the cut, the, just on the, actually on the spine. So you come over here and our size, remember, oops, have it clicked, yeah. Okay, where is it? Width, oh, 1.25. So I'm gonna make it 0.23. Remember that was this right here, 0.23 spine, right? Uh, oops, sorry. Ah. <laughs> Okay, so 0.23 uh, and hit, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna center it, right? PowerPoint's nice because it lets you know right when it's in the center. See that dotted line? So it was in the center. So this is what my spine is gonna look like on a 100 page. It's really narrow, right? Um, now, how do we do our grid lines? How do we center this? This was like a problem I had in a lot of things until, it's one of the reasons I like PowerPoint because it's easy for me to set some guidelines. Um, so what you can do is you can insert, Oh, I'm sorry, it's not an insert, it's on view. View, and you're gonna get on view, and then you're gonna right click, or yeah, right click, grid, grid lines, and you don't wanna click on it, you wanna go over here and hit add vertical. And it's gonna add one right there. You're just gonna leave that right there, okay? This is your inside spine. Um, conveniently on this 100 to 120 pages, if you just let it automatically insert, it's about the right space. Um, for it. So I just leave it there. It's close enough. Um, let's see. And then I go and add another one. Okay. So I've got one here and then I add this other one. And remember that I had that 0.25. So this is, let's see, 6.4. So I'm going to try and get it really close. Okay. There. It's only basically, it's, it's supposed to be 0.25, but it's 0.24. Um, but that's pretty close. But remember with cropping, it's not going to be exactly anyway, so you just want it pretty darn close so you can do all your centering. Okay, so now let's say I have that and I like this, this going on. I can go over here and I make my, my pretty journal and let's, let's just call this a journal. Um, so I'm going to insert, a, you can make this a much prettier shape than I'm going to do. Um, but let's say I just want it to say, um, you could do some sort of tab or something cuter here than this box. Let's just say I'm going to go and make the shape fill is white. And I'm going to do the outline, that same color of pink right here. Okay. Maybe I want to make my weight a little thicker so it looks uh, more intentional. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to, okay, I'm going to put journal. Oops, I got to change my. I gotta go change my font color. It says, I'm gonna type in journal, but I gotta change the font color so it's not white. Uh, text fill uh, black. Oh, I don't know why my text fill went funny. Here, I'll just insert text. <laughs> I'll insert a text box. I don't know why the text fill isn't the right color, but journal. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Um, I wanna center that. Um, we're gonna make it a prettier font. Uh, why oh, I like this one. This one's up. Sorry, you gotta click the box. Um, this one's always a pretty one, and I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, so there I got this. I've centered it in there. See the nice, helpful lines, and then I'm gonna go up ah, there. PowerPoint's telling me that it's perfectly centered. Great. Now, okay, so you're thinking, oh, my centered between here and here. Here's the way I do it. I don't try. I I try sometimes to do it by eyes, but I don't like that. So what I do is I just take a text box here, and what I do is right here, see that line? I make a box, and then I send it backwards here so that I have this. Now what I do is I control, hold control down, click, oops, click, 
I'm trying to click all the boxes. Oh. I'm sorry, you hold shift down, not control. Okay, so now I've selected all these boxes. You can also draw a line to select uh, or draw a box around it to select. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a range and I'm going to go down to a line, a line center. Yay, PowerPoint did it for me. Now I just go click off there and then I just delete my blue. Ta-da, it's pretty, it's centered. Yay. Now what you can do um, is you can save this if you want to pull out the pattern maybe. And um, let's so let's go back to the solid fill, and maybe I'll just make it white or whatever. It doesn't matter. And I want to save this as a template so that I have this nice grid line. I have like a spine there, and you can always change some stuff in it. But say you want to kind of save this as a template, you can go File, Save As, and I'm gonna go to Browse. I'm just gonna save it in Downloads. This new folder thing I created here. Um, click in PowerPoint and there's a template somewhere in here. PowerPoint template. Okay. Right there. So you could just save it and name it a PowerPoint presentation, or you can save it as a template. It just depends how you want to do it. The template, um, then you can open it each time. So if you want, you can just save it as a template and we're going to call it, you know, six, um, by 900 page cover template or something, right? So you save it. There we are. It's saved. Now if I go, let's say I want to do file new. Look, um, I have, we're in templates. Themes, templates. <laughs> I can't find it on my own. Oh, personal. There we go. Here's under instead of office personal. Um, here's that template saved. So you could create um, templates and then you can easily just change things out. See now what I like to do, like I said, I have these, I just add a picture and so I insert, you know, a pattern and I make it and then I'll go new slide. Wait, and then what I'll do is I'll copy this slide, control C and then I'll go control V and then I've already got this set up and then I'll go insert, um, and I'll get it in this folder I only have one pattern but I would you know just pick a different pattern and I would just add a bunch of patterns and then you can save each of these as an individual PDF okay and I would adjust this if this was a different pattern I would adjust this spine so that it matched and you know adjust this or or fix it around but that kind of is a fast way to do some so now you got to save these as a PDF to be able to use them as a cover so you go here and you go file Save as, and you go to PowerPoint template, sorry, um, PDF, and I name it like, I always do these in full, in sets, and so I put it in its own folder, and so I would just name this slide one, and I'm going to do more options. And this is why I wrote the macros. Can you see how annoying this is to go click these? <laughs> you have to hit current slides. So if you save the whole thing, it's not going to work, right? Because you have several slides. So you have to save, save each slide as a PDF. So that's why I wrote a macros to do this because it was, I was frustrated by save as, save as. Okay, so I'm putting this in that downloads, new folder, slide one, PDF, save. Okay, it saves, it thinks about it. Now let's do slide two. So I've I'm clicked slide two. I would do the same thing. File, save as, a PDF, more options, open, current slide, okay, and then I would name this slide two. And I would save it in the same spot, downloads, new folder, slide two. Okay. Okay. So now if you go over to that folder, I have it opened here. You have slide one and slide two, right? So here's slide one. Right. There you go. You've got a cover. Um, that's kind of the simple, easy way to do it. It's fun with patterns. It's quick. Um, like I said, that that's why I created, I do things like this. And that's why I created the software that pulls in a bunch of files 